ಪ್ರಿಯೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ವಿದಾತಿ ಪೂರ್ವ ಯೋ ವೈ ವೇದಾಶ್ಚ ಪ್ರಣೋತಿ ತಸ್ಮೈ ತಾಮಹದೇವಮಾತ್ಮಬುಿ ಪ್ರಕಾಶ ಮುಮುಕ್ಷುರ್ವೈ ಶರಣಮಹಂ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೆ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾದಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ಕರ್ತೃಭ್ಯೋ ವಂಶ ಋಷಿಭ್ಯೋ ಮಹದ್ಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ಗುರುಭ್ಯ ಸರ್ವೋಪ್ಲವರಹಿತ ಬ್ರಜಾನಕನ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಗರ್ಥೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೈವಾಹಮಸ್ಮಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೈವಾಹಮಸ್ಮಿ ವೇದಾಂತಾರ್ಥವಿಭಾಸಕಾಯ ಗುರವೇ ಶಾಂತಾಯ ಸನ್ಯಾಸಿ ನಾನಾವಾದೀನ ಘೇತ್ರ ಸಂಗಪವೇ ಯೋಗೀಂದ್ರ ವಂದ್ಯಾಯ ಮೋಹದ್ವಾಂತ ದಿವಾಕರ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ವಿಧ ಬಿಭ್ರತೆ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಭಾಷ್ಯ ಕೃತೆ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ಸತತ ಪೂರ್ಣಾಯ ಬೋಧಾತ್ಮನೆ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಇನಿಶಿಯೇಟ್ ದಿ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ in the video in the meeting it's recording swami ji all right now we understand that a person loses his track of righteousness when his ability to think clearly gets clouded and that is also due to shok and moh some sort of grief some sort of sorrow sadness and delusion these are the causes which will make a person lose the track of his life and this is demonstrated over here in case of arjuna that arjuna understanding very well that this is his swadharma meaning this is his obligatory duty Arjuna belongs to the class of warriors and rulers and those who are in that position now then should take care of justice of harmony of law and administration security of the people these are the things which are meant for for the ruler class or the rulers to look after arjuna knows well that my fighting over here is not because of some personal reason of course there are personal reasons involved over there too. but that is not the only motivating factor he is able to see that the society will be disturbed 
a wrong value system will be installed. A wrong value system means wherein a person imagines that he will be able to achieve peace and joy, happiness and wealth by living an unrighteous life of injustice, of prejudice, and therefore those, those systems and those people which may bring in such a value system or which may, which may cause damage to the universal value system need to be stopped in their advancement from them, in adva from them being advanced. So thus Arjuna arrives over there in the battlefield. But now he sees that the people that he has to face, fight and defeat, are the same people whom I have loved, whom I consider as mine, and who have love, respect for me too. So now this becomes personal. And therefore, Arjuna is engulfed by sorrow. He is engulfed by grief. He is, he is consumed by sadness. And this is not an ordinary sadness. It dilapidates Arjuna so much that a man of Arjuna's caliber also find that the weapons that he is holding, he is no longer able to hold them because the whole body is shaking, shivering, the heart is sh sh shriveled. And so uh, this is the case of Arjuna and thus Arjuna now wants to retreat and he wants to take up to a life of just a beggary, of penury, which is not meant for him, a person of his ability, his treasure, and who is invested with the welfare of the society. Now for a person to shirk away his duties and then suddenly take to something that is not meant which is not becoming of him, is, is seen in Arjuna. So Shoka and Moha is there. And thus, this Gita Shastra, Arjuna knows now he is being consumed by something that, 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 that has never happened to him. And therefore, he seeks advice from Sri Krishna. He says, Lord, give me that knowledge by which the shoka and moha will come to an end. The grief, the sadness will come to an end. And by Sri Krishna's imparting the knowledge, which we in general call as Bhagavad Gita, shoka and moha, sorrow and delusion was annihilated, was destroyed. That, and destroyed completely. And therefore, this Gita Shastra has got a Mahaprayojana. It does not have a small purpose. The purpose is attainment of moksha and therefore, which means complete annihilation of sorrow right from its roots. Grief will be destroyed, misery will be destroyed right from its, the, the seed from where it sprouts, the bija is also destroyed of the samsara. And therefore, this Gita Shastra has got a Mahaprayojana. 
it is not ordinary it is not just giving an advice to someone motivating someone or prompting someone to go fight you know how to 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 be motivated to make achievements in this world over here the purpose is now annihilation of grief completely totally not partially not even temporarily it is a total and therefore it is called as mahaprayojana so therefore this gita shastra is definitely something which is the knowledge of this gita is something which transcends the time which means it will always be applicable in all frames of time whether it was past present or it would be even future for everyone always provided one becomes available to this knowledge thus now we come over there bhagavad gita the first chapter every chapter uniqueness about bhagavad gita is that every chapter is called as yoga okay yoga over here is the sadhana the word yoga means over here sadhanam that by by that by which paramatma or moksha can be attained and therefore the subject matter of bhagavad gita through and through remaining the same yet certain things will be highlighted in the discussions categorized as these 18 chapters and therefore these uh, chapters are called with those particular titles and every title then is called as yoga so the first chapter of bhagavad gita is arjuna vishada yoga vishada means despair disappointment feeling helpless hopeless is vishada and this happens to all of us so it may happen to all of us that we also fall into despair or disappointment yet one thing that happens because of which arjuna's despair is also called as yoga is because it has led him to this knowledge to shri krishna he is turning to shri krishna he is turning towards this knowledge now the reason was this this despair now if the despair is going to make somebody like even arjuna turn to this knowledge we are going to say that this kind of a despair is welcome it will become yoga now therefore how to turn our disappointments into yoga is is very important the moment we use this as a stepping stone even our those occasions of grief sorrow sadness betrayal all these occasions if we are able to turn them into an opportunity to take a step further towards god towards moksha then even those those occasions are also a blessing in disguise and therefore arjuna's despair is also called as yoga we have the first chapter titled as arjuna vishada yoga and the pe peculiarity because this is the first chapter the opening verse is mouthed 
by Dhritarashtra, is spoken by Dhritarashtra. And it is <coughs> very strange that the very opening words of such a great text should be there in the mouth of Dhritarashtra. The word Dhritarashtra also has a significance. It is not only the name of the blind king whose ambition, whose infatuation, whose greed has led to such a disastrous war. But that name is also significant. And that is why it is very important that we name our children with a meaning. Just sounds are not enough. Dhritarashtra means the, the one who has held on to the kingdom very fast. We all know everything over here in spite of one not wanting will slip away from the hands one day but there are people whose whose grip who want to grip the world is so fast so strongly that that it it becomes a problem years ago i heard an analogy and it is somebody was asking is death to a teacher, is death so painful, sir? And then the teacher was a wise man and said, if you are going to sit in a chair and somebody is going to lift you, and that person who is going to lift you out of the chair is powerful, but if you are going to hold on to the arms of the chair so fast, it will only cause you pain. But if you are sitting over there lightly, you will be lifted like a flag without any injury, without any pain. Grip over things, the sense of possessiveness. It belongs to me, it belongs to me, and it should belong to me always. I remember this Khalil Gibran saying, when some mother asked, talk to us about parenting, talk to us about children. And in that book, Khalil Gibran writes, the prophet says, you are like a bow. And God is like the archer who has set the bow on the string, uh, set, set the arrow on the string of that bow. If the bow claims that this arrow belongs to me, the arrow won't be able to move forward. The bow should be able to give the velocity, set the velocity, give the energy, the inspiration for the arrow to move towards its, its target. If the bow is going to hold on to the, to the arrow, then the growth of that movement of the arrow will be thwarted. Whatever it is, even if it is your children, possessiveness does not work. They have arrived with their own destiny, with their own purpose to be fulfilled. The parents have become the passage, and the passage should not now ask, or passage should not insist on making those passengers as permanent residents of the land. Go. We have given you all that you require to live. As parents, 
you can give them values and that is more important. Whether you are able to give them the best of schools and colleges would depend on the economic status of the parents. That's fine. Some parents may be able to do that, some of them may not be able to do that. But all the parents, irrespective of their economic status, can definitely give values to live life. You can give them the technical know-how profession, you can make them proficient in their professions by sending them to the best of business schools and management colleges. But mind you, all that you are teaching them is, is training them how to be, how to earn just bread and butter. You are not giving them anything more than that. And how to hunt and how to fetch food. Even a sparrow or a dog also teaches its offsprings. Then as parents, what did you give? What energy did you fill into them? What is their inspiration? What is the velocity that you have given them? Because the O can give the energy and the direction to the arrow to move. When the parents have given the right values, righteousness, now there will be some principle to stand for. And when a person does not have any principle to stand for, he will fall for everything. If you have nothing to stand for, one will fall for everything. Let there be some principles to lead your life. And therefore, that much, as much as those people around you are, able, you are able to supply them with energy, that's all. Any claim on anything more than that is going to become possessiveness. Dhritarashtra means that. He is holding on to the entire kingdom as mine. It belongs to me and it should belong to me only. Knowing well that it cannot continue to belong to anyone anytime. Many kings have come and emperors have also come, laid their claims. And now they have gone into the dust, not leaving even a trace in the history. All have gone. Dhritarashtra is exactly opposite. He says, I will hold on because it belongs to me. One can at the most say that for time being, one is appointed as the caretaker and nothing more than that. And knowing well what are your duties, executing those duties is only way for a person to become mature in life. Look for maturity through all the experiences, all the interactions. Keep that as the standard of growth. Instead of that, the blind king says that everything should continue to belong to me. And that's why his name is Dhritarashtra. With his plotting mind, wanting to lay his claim on everything, he has led his sons also into this disastrous situation. This Dhritarashtra now speaks. 
the original text continues, comes to us as a dialogue between Janmejaya and Vaishampaya. Janmejaya is the son of Parikshit. Parikshit is the grandson of Arjuna. Parikshit is the grandson of Arjuna and Parikshit's son, that means Arjuna's great grand, Arjuna's uh, great grandson is Janmejaya. Janmejaya now wants to listen to the glory of his ancestors and glory of Shri Krishna. And he is therefore sitting in front of this great sage, his name is Vaishampayan. Vaishampayan again is the disciple of Veda Vyasa. And because of that, Vaishampayan knows the entire history in all details. So Vaishampayan now says, Dhritarashtravacha Dharma Kshetre Guru Kshetre Samaveta Yuyut Savaha Mama Kaf Pandavash Chaiva Pandavash Chaiva Kimakurvata Sanjaya <coughs> this is Dharma Kshetra, O Sanjaya. What did Mamakaha, my children, and Pandu's children? <coughs> what did my children and Pandu's children? Children in the sense, sons over here now, grown up men, they are not school going boys. Okay? So, what did my sons and Pandu's son do on the battlefield? Now, this battlefield is not an ordinary battlefield, it is actually a, a, a Dharmakshay. It is not just Yuddha Kshetra, but it belongs, it is a Dharma Kshetra, which means a very holy place. It is a very holy place and regarded with great reverence by all our ancestors, by the Kurus. And therefore, it is Guru Kshetra belonging to the Gurus. It is a Dharma Kshetra, a very holy place. What did my children and Pandu's children do? Generally, if people were going to gather in the Dharma Kshetra in a holy place, they would do things that would that that will be conducive to Dharma. That will give that will that will that that will nurture and nourish dharma from where the dharma can sprout, sprout. but they have gathered over there yuyut savaha eager to fight the battle with a desire to fight the battle, desires of fighting the battle that they have gathered in this place, what did they do? Obviously, if they were desirous of fighting, they should be fighting. What question is this? Because Dhritarashtra, this question is not as simple as that, that he is simply asking Sanjaya to give an account of the events taking place over there. Dhritarashtra's question has got a background because this question is not asked on the first day of the battle. 
this question that Dhritarashtra is asking is on the 10th day of the battle. So this is a flashback. So he wants to know what has happened on the battlefield. That I had done the arrangements so perfectly well that even if the Pandavas fight the battle, I have damaged them psychologically that they will lose the battle eventually. And all of the hopes of victory were resting on the shoulders of Bhishma, the great grandsire of the Guru clan. And it is on the 10th day that Bhishma collapses. And there no other no other warrior on the battlefield had was equivalent to Bhishma to take a duel, to fight a duel with Bhishma. There was only one, and that was Arjuna. No other person was capable of doing anything like this, and he had made it sure that Arjuna should not be able to do this. He already had sent a message on the eve of the battle, which would act like a venom, a slow poison in Arjuna's mind. And therefore, now what has happened? What happened that my poison did not work and Arjuna fought the battle to make Bhishma collapse? This is actually the question. And therefore, in reply to the question, which seems an ordinary and innocent question, Sanjaya is able to understand the intention of the cunning man. And therefore, he takes him back 10 days ago what happened on the battlefield. So that now Bhishma knows, uh, sorry, so that this Dhritarashtra knows what transpired over there because of which Arjuna became capable of fighting the battle and bringing the victory. Dhritarashtra already is worried because he knows though the Kauravas, his sons, Duryodhana, etc. have been able to bring an army which was much bigger than the Pandavas in number, Yet number is not the only thing which will make victory possible. At this point, I remember one more incident from Ramayana and I would like to share it with you. <coughs> it is a very interesting incident from Ramayana. Bhagavan Ram is in exile, living as a mendicant in the forest, subsisting only on fruits and roots, leaves. You can understand 14 years already have passed like that and one year has already gnawed on him because Sita was abducted and Ram was searching for her relentlessly. Now, so Ram simply arrives, Sri Rama arrives on the battlefield only with his bow and arrows. Ravana is a mighty king who has defeated even the devas, even the celestial beings, and he, he has brought the wealth from the heaven into his coffers. 
Arj, or what is that? His name Ravana is powerful. So when Ravana comes on the battlefield to fight with Ravan, he arrives in a chariot which is well equipped with weapons, missiles, well protected, shielded. And Rama as a mendicant, even without shoes on the battlefield. Ravana is all covered in armor and shields. Wielding the most powerful weapons and missiles, extremely advanced chariot, swift and strong horses comes, and Rama simply stands just with these two, with the bow and arrows in his hands. That time Vibhishana, out of love for Rama, gets petrified, scared. And he goes to Sri Rama and says, Rama, how are you going to fight this Ravana? This Ravana is not ordinary, he is a warrior who has defeated even the celestial beings and dragged their names and wealth into his palace. You can understand how powerful he is and here you stand even without shoes to cover your feet. from the scorching sun or from the thorns and pebbles. How are you going to face Ravana? You do not even have a simple chariot, even if you, even if, you know, you decide to retrieve and go hide somewhere, you won't even get that chance because his horses are swift and his charioteer is smart. How will you do that, Rama? At that time, Sri Rama says, Remember, Vibhishana, the chariot which brings victory is different than this chariot. Ravana has a chariot made from steel, impenetrable. But the chariot that I stand on is a different chariot. And it is this chariot which brings victory. It is called as Vijayarat. Duryodhana only has been collecting more number of people to join his army through threatening them by giving them some allurement, bait. And he has sought alliances of different kings to join his army. So he, his army is much bigger than the Pandavas. But those people who have joined the Pandavas have not joined because Pandavas were simply going to are, are threatening them, or Pandavas were promising them, giving them some bait or allurement. And so all the people on the Pandava side had joined because they wanted to be on the right side. So the confidence that they have is not a borrowed confidence. It is not imported. 
their loyalty is not because of any other frivolous reason their loyalty is because pandavas are righteous so there is a right reason so dhritarashtra also knows this well though it looks like a army which is smaller than the kaurava army yet the confidence loyalty that these people have from the pandava camp is much more than what we can purchase if one thinks that loyalty friendship can be purchased then they are in the duryodhana's camp and if the loyalty and friendship is because of your goodness then you are in arjuna's camp dhritarashtra and duryodhana has made all the arrangements which are materially which can be said are required for success to take place but they have forgotten that just gathering things is not what makes success people are involved and they are living beings and there is much more than that dhritarashtra already has this evidence so also it will be displayed in duryodhana but presently with this anxiety and now that anxiety that dhritarashtra has actually was not baseless because now the anxiety that will be will i lose the battle will i lose the crown will i lose the throne will my sons not become the next rulers this anxiety somewhere was was on a fact that he has unconsciously consciously appreciated and that seems to be really taking place now factually happening when bhishma falls and therefore dhritarashtra is asking this question what happened what happened that how could arjuna fight this war because they had gathered on this holy place it should have had changed arjuna's mind it should have had changed if maybe it could have had changed all the pandavas mind maybe did did going to that holy place affect my sons or the pe people on my side of the battle kim akurvata what did they do o sanjaya on that holy place because if one has gone over there knowing well that it is a holy tirtha kshetra dharma kshetra there is going to be a change in the mind there is going to be some change in psychology just as you start thinking differently when you are you go to a temple and you go to a discotheque going to those places they are just places yet it makes a difference and therefore it is important that you know once in a while we also keep visiting the mukshetras kshetra means a field in which the crops are grown dharmakshetra therefore would mean a place where dharma is sowed and its fruits are is are reaped when it grows dharma kshetre guru kshetre samaveta they have come together sangata they have come together for what 
Mukti. Who are these people who have come together? Yuyut Sabaha. Basically, they are all desirous of fighting the war, fighting the battle. Yuyut Sabaha. Who are they? Mamakaha. My children and Banu's children. Now, over here, by saying Mamakaha, he has made it very clear. Though they are also the, the men from the same clan, but he has already cast the divide in his mind. Now he does not consider them to be his own. They are not mine. And so, Mamakaha Kim Kurvatai Iti Etao. Etavata eva prashna nirvahe pandavash cheti pratham nirdeshat pandaveshu mamakara bhav pudarshanena tad droham abhivyanakti. Now he does not consider pandavas as his own. Interesting part is that pandavas still consider Dhritarashtra as their own uncle. Even after the war was fought and all the, all the Kauravas died in the war, it was the Pandavas who looked after Dhritarash till the end. They took care of him in spite of Dhritarashtra having he has, he has spewed so much of venom against them. Still, for Pandavas, he was one of them. And therefore, Dhritarashtra, he, he creates a divide. Mamakaha Pandavaha. And therefore, Mamakara Bhava Pudarshanena, they are not mine. And so over here, Dhritarashtra, now he has taken a license to himself to cause harm to the Pandavas. This is what, what comes to the first shloka. Because this is a question that has been asked to Sanjaya, now Sanjaya, his charioteer, his advisor, a close confidant to Dhritarashtra, who is, who stands by Dhritarashtra all 24 hours as his personal attendant, answers, Sanjaya Vacha Drishtva Tu Pandava Nikam Vyudham Duryodhana Sada Acharya Mupasangamya Acharya Mupasangamya Raja Vachanam Abravit Raja Vachanam Abravit Sanjaya Vacha Sanjaya spoke Sanjaya says Trishtva to Pandava, having seen the Pandava army, viewed him, means the view Harachana, its arrangement, the battle arrangement, the army formation, huh? the way that army had arranged itself for the combat. Drishtva to Pandava Anikam. Anikam is the Sena. And Vyudham is the arrangement of that Sena. Duryodhana Hathada. Then after Duryodhana having observed the Pandava army in its formation, Acharyam Upasangamya. He goes to his, approaches his teacher 
approached, having approached this teacher, Raja Vachanam Abhraveed, Raja Duryodhanaha Vachanam Abhraveed. Then this king Duryodhana thus spoke. Trishtvatu Pandavani kam till now, everything was only on the papers and in words. But now seeing the Pandava army, actually seeing that if the forces have come together, and this is going to be a decisive battle, It was not a small skirmish on the border, but this was a very decisive battle. Drishtva tu Pandava Nikam, now having seen that Duryodhana, in whose mind the fear already had percolated, now goes to his teacher because he needs some confidence. And not that he goes to the teacher seeking confidence, but he does a very wrong thing in that haste. Raja Vajana Mantravit, he thus spoke, and he says, Pashyaita Pandu Putrana, Pashyaita Pandu Putrana, Acharya Mahatim Chamun Acharya Mahatim Chamun Vyudham Trupada Putrena Vyudham Trupada Putrena Tava Shishyena Dhimata Tava Shishyena Dhimata Pashya Now he urges his teacher Dronacharya, who is the second in line to command the army. Bhishma is the main person and for 10 days Bhishma remains as the commander in chief of the army. After Bhishma falls, Dronacharya takes over and becomes the commander in chief of the army. So Dronacharya, the teacher, is very important, goes to Drona, Acharya Drona, and he says, Pashya, O oh, teacher, look at these, at this Pandava army, and how is it? Mahatim Chamum, at this massive army of the Pandavas. So he is expressing his wonderment, his, you know, which has come to him as, as by physically seeing the arrangement in the army, as a surprise, Vyudham Drupada Putreda, and this arrangement has been made, the view, the view has been made by, by, has been planned by Drupada Putra, the son of Drupada, Drishtadyumna. Tavashishyana Dhimata, and sir, the one who has made this ar army formation fighting from, on the side of the Pandavas is nobody else but your own disciple. You have trained him. You have taught him. So he is your disciple. So whatever he has done, he is not ordinary. And over there, it is in a way of mocking the teacher. Because Drishtad Drishta Dyumna, this Drupada
This is the goodness of Mahabharata. Every character is shown with his goodness as well as his shortfalls. Whether it is Draupadi, Arjuna, or even Dharmaraj, Yudhisht, with their weaknesses. This is not a Walt Disney film. <laughs> it is different. Pashyaita, so Dhritra, this Drupada was defeated by the by the Kaurava Pandava princess on behest of Drona. And when Drupada was thus insulted, then he did some penance and he sought a boon to have a son who will be valorous enough to defeat and kill Drona, to kill Drona. Now, this fact is not hidden from anyone that Drupada has his son because he ultimately wants his son to kill Drona. But he sends his son to Drona for his training in weaponry. And look at that goodness and greatness. Drona says, I am a teacher and I will teach. My job is to teach. He trains Drupada Putra. According to Duryodhana, this was just foolishness. If you knew that this man was going to be harmful to me, why would I even train him? Why would I even allow him to become one of the Proficient people. Why would I do that? So, teacher, you have done that, and today, the day has come when this Drupada Putra, the son of Drupada, Trishtadyumna, his name is, has come in front of you. Having got trained from you, he has arranged your army over there in the, in the enemy camp so that we can be defeated and you can be killed. That intelligent man who is Drupada's son has made this arrangement. Now look at it, teacher. Now look at it means why is the teacher not able to see or what? That he is urging the teacher or was, was Dronacharya sleeping on the battlefield that he is waking up, him up and says, wakey, wakey and watch, look at that. That look at that has got this meaning. It is your foolishness which has done this. Look at it. What have you created? What did you do? O Drona. So instead of infusing an encouragement or inspiration, he goes to the teacher and insults the great man Drona. But Drona already has promised his protection to the Kaurava clan. Drona is also bound. 
by his friends in spite of this insult coming to him. So Dhritarashtra in the opening verses only we now see Dhritarashtra and we also see Duryodhana. We still have to see Arjuna but before we come to Arjuna's, we will have to go through the array of various warriors over there. At least, though Bhagavad Gita just mentions their names, but those who have studied, studied the or heard the Mahabharata, they will know that every name over there is with a history behind. We will go through a little bit of that, though not in very, very details, because our thing is not learning Mahabharata, but we want to see the Bhagavad Gita. We will go through a little bit of it, so that very soon we should arrive where we can see Arjuna on the battlefield. And then Sri Krishna imparting the knowledge. Let us meet next to continue further. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnaat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Shankaracharya Keshavam Badarayana Sutra Bhashikrita Vande Bhagavanta Punapunaha Ishwaro Guruatmeti Murti Veda Vibhagine Vyoma Vadvyakta Dehaya Dakshina Murtaye Namaha Thank you all.